Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. This is Latif Mikado, and this is episode 44. Yes, 44. Uh, when I first started, 40, even 40, 30 seemed like um, pretty far away. Once I hit 30, it seems to be flying through now. So um, I'm excited. This is mentally where I wanted to be. I, I, I want, at first, when I first started, with the podcast, I was kind of anticipating. I kept thinking about the next episode, and when I would sit down, I was like, "Oh, I don't know what I'm going to talk about." Or, and um, it was difficult. It was difficult. Um, but I was anticipating it. Sometimes it would seem like it would take a long time, and I was like, "Oh man!" And it would. It was basically 24 hour period, um, and it was during a, a pretty slow time in the beginning. It was the tail end of slowness. Um, when it came to work, because we were right after the holidays, which was, um, you know, we started January 1st with a podcast. Um, uh, but then it, the numbers started to move. And then once we hit 30, it was like we flew by 30 to 44, which means 50 is right around the corner. Um, not that I'm counting. It's uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not counting the episodes and saying, yeah, let's go for another 10. No, I'm actually, um, I'm excited. It was it was one of those things that you don't want to forget about letting other people down. You don't want to let yourself down. I'm the type of person, anyone who knows me, when I start something, I like to finish it. It might take me some time, but I like to finish it. And I do take on several tasks that other people are pretty intimidated by, you know, like writing, writing books. Writing books can be scary. It can be um, pretty intimidating, especially when you... Um, you're halfway into the book and you kind of forget everything. You forget where you're at. You forget some of the names of the characters. You forget who was who. You forget people's ages. You forgot what city. You forget, you know, um, my stories bounce between um, Queens and the Bronx because I lived in both places. And sometimes I have to double check and say, wait, wait, hold up. Am I talking? Where do I live? <laughs> you know, in this story. Am I living in the Bronx or in Queens? So. I think I'm always going to do that. I think I'm always going to be between those two boroughs. Will I do something about uh, North Carolina? I don't know, you know. But the point I was trying to get to was, you know, um, I like to say I'm trying to do something and complete it. It has nothing to do with the success of it. It has nothing, really, it doesn't. The success is beautiful. I'm not downing it. I'm not crying sour grapes. Um... It's a difficult task to be successful in everything you do. Sometimes it's difficult to be successful in just one thing. But what I'm trying to get to is the journey and the fact that I can look back and say, wow, I did it. I did something that a lot of people uh, can't do, don't want to do, are intimidated to do, don't have the drive to do, are not motivated, don't have the... The encourage, you know, they're not, uh, what is it? The courage to try it. Um, my cologne was one thing. I took it to the end. Total, it wasn't a failure because people didn't like it. It was a failure because I didn't know how to sell it, man. I really, uh, we were in between. It was that funny phase within um, social media. So I didn't really, I don't even know if we had social media out. This is 2008. Where were we? Where were we with social media? I would have to double check. If we were on it, um, I don't think it was that popular. I don't think everybody was on it. Even though I was on a lot of social media platforms before most people that I knew were on it, um, including MySpace from back in the days. In fact, I was working on one called Freestyle Friends um, before MySpace. This is really, really crazy, ironic. And I had my webmaster, and I told him the idea of what I wanted. I wanted a place where people can go in, and they can set up their own pages, almost like their own websites, but it would be under our banner. So it'd be like Freestyle Friends. It's so crazy that I think about it now. I'm like, my God, you know, I was like, I was there. Same story like I told you guys about the Law Radio app. 
nobody nobody was doing that i had the idea and you know but the thing is everybody has great ideas you know i've i've, I've brought this up before we can all sit around and come up with like superstar freaking mega multi-million dollar possibilities with some great ideas but executing the ideas is a whole other game but i've always been able to pretty much um move forward with things that um that i like to do and so that's always been count always been a, a something i've been proud of um the podcast uh 44 episodes wow um as far as the content, uh, content to me is very important because there's a lot of gems in there, especially if you're involved in the genre, freestyle, or if you're a fan, or if you have any interest in getting involved, um, or maybe you just want to kind of kick back. I don't want to every single night talk about freestyle because there's really sometimes not that much to talk about, you know? Hold on. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I think allergies are kicking in over here. I'm not sure. I'm feeling a little congested. Trying not to cough much because I'm getting on a plane Saturday to California, and I have a connection in Dallas. So that's a long ride. And, man, with this coronavirus going on, I can see everybody just looking at me, being like, yo, we got to get that dude off the damn plane. So I have to get a suppressant and get something to, just to control it while I'm on the plane because that would be a bad scene if I'm... Uh, if I'm quarantined from the plane, <laughs> you know, so, but, uh, other than that, working on my t-shirt store today, uh, pretty confusing. I've worked on this thing several times. I've had a few different stores. I've, I, usually when I put it up, people grab the items like right away. Um, but I'm trying to do something a little different now. Uh, and it looks good. Right now, it's like 22 products on there. You know, different freestyle sayings. It's pretty cool. Um, I have other ones coming up soon, so you might want to go and check it out. The website, just so you know, is stylingfree.com. So it's S-T-Y-L-I-N-F-R-E-E.com. Go in there, check it out. Tell me what you think. Um, um, excuse any uh, some of the construction stuff that's going on. It's still under construction. Uh, If you're listening to this podcast, you're going to know about it. Nobody else will yet, so I'm not going to be posting it yet. Uh, So now's a good chance for you to go in and kind of take a look. And if you have any issues with it and you can um, maybe let me know, that's cool. You know, I appreciate that. Tell me how it feels to navigate. Does it make sense to you? I'm working on the collections right now and how to work the menu and how to kind of maneuver move around a little bit you know so uh but i it's really the quality shirts so i got top of the line uh shirts uh i wanted to get top of the line that was not uh was wouldn't break the bank so uh profit on there for me is very little Uh, it's really not the purpose if the profit covers the expenses of running this thing then that's great but it's just something that i've always wanted to do and i'm of course, my company's tagged on it, so that it's a good promo for us. And the, the shirts are dope, man. They're dope. They're, we're doing, right now, all black. It's all black. Black with different sayings and so on. Um, I'm not going to do colors yet, so I'm going to stay all black, kind of keep it like that. Really focus on the quality, focus on the prints, and just keep it black. Because if I start going into other colors, then I have to play around with the, um, with the graphics. I don't want to do that. So I want to be able to give my people the ideas and let them come to me with what they what they come up with, you know. So, um, so I've been working on that. Also, in a little while, I'm gonna knock out some drops, video drops, uh, for you guys who do not know what that is. Those are video promos that you usually see artists where they'll go on camera. We used to only do it as audio at one point, and we used to put it on radio stations. Now it's usually um, video. It's used for social media, and it's like, hey, what's up? This is Angel from the Cover Girls. Come check me out on this date at this show. We'll be singing this thing, da-da-da-da-da. You know what I mean? Um, so those are video drops. You'll see a handful of acts that do them. Unfortunately, there are some acts that don't do them. I don't understand why. Um... The worst that happens with us is we might kind of back up a little bit on it. We get we get kind of backed up because we'll promise X amount of drops 
And we like to kind of do them a little, little better. I like the quality to be good. I, I usually write the scripts, um, and then Angel takes them, she'll memorize them. Then we'll cut them up. Well, we'll, we'll try to edit it, make it really, make it pop. Try to have fun, some fun with it. But they're a little bit of work. You have to make sure it looks good. You know, we don't want to look cheesy. We wanna, we don't want to look good. You know, we don't want to look professional like it's a movie. But we wanna, we wanna look decent. So, um, I went to go do the drops a little while ago and noticed that. My charger, there was something wrong with the wire. So my batteries for my camera, well, both of my batteries, one of my camera's battery was totally dead. The other one that I was charging for about four hours, I didn't realize that the wire was down. So when I went to put it in, uh, it was only at 2%. So I can't work with 2% battery. So I have a charger now when I'm done with the podcast, editing and so on. I put it up. Then we're going to knock out these drops. We were going to wait till tomorrow, but i like to have it uh, to the promoter. So the two drops that we're going to do tonight is going to be for the Austin show, which is uh, the 28th. No, I'm sorry. That's the 29th, Saturday, and the Houston show, which is Friday the 29th of February. Okay, we'll talk about 2020. So, um, yeah, so we're going to do that tonight. Uh, I like acts. I like, always like my acts to, uh, to do drops. There's some that they don't like to do them. You know, they come up with this thing where they'll say, well, I'm not the promoter. I'm not getting paid to promote. Well, you're not. But you know what? If you can help it, you should go and try to promote it. Listen, when actors put out a new movie, what do they do? They go on every talk show they can get on. And they talk about their movie, you know? (coughs) And it's very important. They're not getting paid for that. They're not paying them for that. Um, but it's important and it helps uh, let people know what's going on. So if you just leave it up to the promoters, sometimes they're very limited. Um, and also their fans, they don't really have that many people. But if the artist goes and does their drop, what happens is it kind of it, 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 um, reaches their audience. And then if their audience that are in that area or close to it want to come, they got the information. They could come to the show. So, you know, we never want an empty house. We always want to have a pretty decent turnout. You know, if we can sell out a show, beautiful. And we, we sell out quite a bit. With the Cover Girls, we sell out. Cover Girls and Susie sell out a lot of shows. I'm talking about two capacity or beyond. So, uh, not too many people can do that. But there's also reasons that we do that. You know, number one, we do a pretty full show. So, with the Cover Girls and Susie, both of them, you're going to look at seven and eight songs. There's not too many people that do that. Economically, they both pull their weight for their price. Uh, they travel very modestly. You know, we don't ask for anything crazy. Um, you save money if you do Lil Susie and the Cover Girls together since I'm on the road with the two of them. So you save some money and some expenses and so on. And sometimes I work the price out. Um, but I always try to encourage Susie to do drop. She takes a little time to do them, but that's cool. She has a full... Uh, she's got a full day from the minute her eyes open till she goes to bed at night with her kids, her husband, and a new house, and so on. So I understand. So, but I stay on top of her. Eventually, she finds time and she'll shoot one with her her camera, and she'll send it to me, and I'll take it and do whatever edits I need to do. With Angel, um, we just find a spot either in the office or in the house, and we try to uh, do something decent, something that sounds, you know, fun. Uh, sometimes I'll put a green screen behind and I'll, you know, if I want to do some edits and try to like hook it up a little bit. Other times I want to kind of keep it simple. I don't want to get too, uh, too crazy with it. I don't want, I don't want it to be this big production. I just want to kind of keep it simple to the point, no distractions and get it to the promoter so they can do what they have to do. So, so be on the lookout for those, uh, drops and please, whenever you see any of that stuff, I mean, whenever you can share uh, if they're in your area or not, just share it. Even if it's if you're on the other side of the country, a share always helps. It just it just looks good. So, and it looks good for the promoters when the promoters see that a lot of people with my acts in particular, when the, the promoters see that my my acts are being shared and they're being liked and loved and commented, it looks good for us. So it's it's really a good it's it's a good look for us. So we I appreciate that whenever you guys do that. I know who you guys are. I see them a lot of times. I'll go up there and I'll say, I'll tell you thank you, you know. So, uh, besides that, uh, yeah, Angel was out today doing the whole nails, hair, getting ready for this show. Should be a nice turnout. Should be a real nice turnout. Uh, so, uh, we're looking forward to this. 
going to see a few of my friends are going to be there. Uh, shout out to Mario Pacheco. Um, if you guys are not aware, he's got the new wine called 808 Beats. Taste the bass. Check out the label. It has Angel OCG on the label. Yep. So this this is a freestyle fan. This guy is a big fan. Knows it all. Um, and uh, he put together uh, his own wine. Uh, great production. I mean, he's been in the business for a long time. So this is not something new. He's been in the wine business like many, many years. He's done big things in his career. And he wants to cross. Um, and it's cool because I talk about this a lot where he took his one of his passions and the free, his passion for freestyle and he crossed them and that was a wonderful thing and he pulled me and Angel on uh, onto his team so you know we're really excited about the launch of this wine and we really hope you guys support it um, it's uh, you get more information he's going to have the site up soon you can find him probably on my pages under Mario Pacheco or 808 Beats check him out on Facebook on Instagram on Twitter uh, if you have any questions you can order the stuff online it's really not that expensive it's a quality wine and the bottles alone will become collector's items especially for you uh, freestyle geeks man you know so and if you bring them if you bring the bottles to a show and you bring it up to us Angel will sign those bottles for you so uh, so I think it's a good look something different you know what I'm saying uh and this is what I encourage. I encourage all of you guys, man, if you guys have any any ideas, um, you know, share them with me. Let me know. I'm not going to take your idea. I'm not going to share your idea. But let me, maybe I can help you, you know, you know, push through. And uh, But let me know what you're doing. And uh, if you're crossing a passion with freestyle, man, I'm excited. I want to see I want to see what you guys come up with, you know. So, but be on, be on the lookout for that. If you drink wine, if you don't, like I said, I, I really don't drink wine, but I'm going to drink me a bottle. I have to. I'm going to drink a bottle, well, not a bottle by myself. <laughs> I'll drink one with my wife and um, and kind of enjoy it and, you know, see, uh, you know, how would I be not drinking the wine? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and, uh, and then also I'm going to have a bottle for my backdrop. You know, I need a bottle for my backdrop. So, not gonna, no plane there. We're going to, we'll be... It's going to look cool. It's going to be really cool. So, But uh, other than that, uh, tomorrow, haircut time. Maybe pick up an outfit. Take it easy. Try to pack early. Try to get to bed early. Um, and then tomorrow's Valentine's Day, too. <laughs> so, oh, crazy, man. <laughs> crazy. I have a lot of girls under, you know, under me. I have uh, my daughter's not here. She usually gets her Valentine's for me. But I now have Santana. And I have two other granddaughters, even though they're little, I still make sure they get theirs. And of course, my wife, you know, but um, I'm going to try to get as much as I can done early so I can kind of shut down for the night. Uh, this this last night I wasn't feeling too good. I know I'm coming down with something. I can feel it. I can hear it in my voice. You guys can probably hear it also. Um, it doesn't feel like a cold. It feels like an allergy. Could be, who knows? This North Carolina is crazy. But uh, I'm just hoping I'm okay by the time I get on that plane. <laughs> That's the only thing I keep thinking about. I'm like, oh, please, don't have me coughing. Because all you got to do is cough once. You don't even have to be a heavy cougher. You cough one time, and next thing you know, you turn around, everybody's turning around looking at you. And God forbid it's one of those crazy coughs where shit sounds like a pop in your throat, you know? Then everybody just turns around, and now, now nobody wants to even sit next to you. <laughs> so... Uh, that could become a problem. Uh, but, you know, looking forward to getting out. Uh, it's going to be a good show in um, in Fresno this weekend. So if you guys are heading out there, man, let me know if you're going out there. You know, maybe there's a way I can, uh, if you text me or you, you message me on Facebook, and maybe I could get out there. I can meet you guys. I would love to meet you guys. If I could get the girls to meet you, that's great. Um the VIP time and the autographs are really different with each venue, so it's really hard to predict or make any kind of promises with that. But reach out, let me know that you're there or that you're going, and I'd love to hear from you guys, you know, and hopefully I can get to meet you, take a picture. I'm interested in meeting you, period. So it's not about privilege for you to meet me, whatever. I'm interested in meeting you. I want to know who you guys are. So 
But anyway, listen, until tomorrow night, um, be safe. Uh, I'll be talking to you tomorrow night, but I was going to say happy Valentine's Day, but enjoy the day, you know. And until tomorrow, good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.